if you are making this decision to change careers, to go to medical school, then you have to sacrifice. The Old Pre-Meds Podcast, session number 321. Welcome to the Old Pre-Meds Podcast. My name is Dr. Ryan Gray, your host here. Every week where I take your questions directly from our Pre-Med Hangout over at premedhangout.com. Just use the hashtag non-trad question and we'll pull uh, our, our questions and answer them here on the podcast. We have an interesting one today, something I think comes up a lot that I think a lot of non-trads really, really struggle with my answer to this one. Before we jump in, though, I want to talk about the MCAT Minute brought to you by Blueprint MCAT. As you are on this journey, remember, remember that the MCAT is one of the most important parts of it. To get a good MCAT score, you have to plan. You have to prep. You have to plan your prep. And to do that very easily. Go to blueprintmcat.com, sign up for a free account, and get access to their free study planner tool, all for free. That's blueprintmcat.com. All right, let's go ahead and jump into our question today from a student who says, how important is clinical experience for folks who have a non-medical career? In between full-time work with significant travel, family obligations, and a post in MCAT setting, there's little extra time to commit to clinical experience, especially when they mostly require weekdays and I work all day. Is there weight given to career experience instead of clinical experience if it's not really feasible? Or examples of people who get in like this. I have 60 hours from one organization I could do mornings at, but I moved for a new work assignment. So... Here's why people really struggle with my answer to this question. Clinical experience, I will say it till the day I die. This is a hill I will die on. Clinical experience is the most important part of your pre-med journey. You're applying to medical school. You are saying, I want to be a doctor. And if you don't have clinical experience to prove to yourself first and foremost that you like being around patients, especially coming from a non-clinical career, how are you going to show the medical schools that you understand what you're getting yourself into? How are you going to write a cohesive personal statement, which our philosophy is, the, the personal statement is, why do you want to be a doctor? How do you write a, a personal statement about why you want to be a doctor that involves the experiences of being around patients. Typically what I see in, in situations like this is students basically say, I don't have time for this. I'm a non-traditional student. I'm special. Take me as I am. I have dedication. I'm a hard worker. I have good enough grades. I have hypothesized that I like taking care of patients and being around patients and being in clinical settings, but I haven't really tested it out. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. I actually had a conversation recently uh, that that episode hasn't aired yet on the pre-med years great conversation with a biology teacher. <laughs> She's a biology professor, more specifically. She has her PhD. She started medical school and then dropped out because she didn't like being around patients. She didn't like the stress of taking care of people who were sick and dying. And she said on the podcast, the, the, the podcast episode was for <laughs> something very different, but we ended up talking about it briefly because I think it was an important lesson, she talks about the fact that she made that very expensive mistake of going to medical school for a year, getting debt for a year, because she didn't have clinical experience to prove to herself first that this is what you want to do. And so when students come to me and they say, hey, and a lot of the students we work with are non-trads, they say, hey, 
I'm non-trad. I'm special. I have a full-time job that's non-clinical. I have a family. I have other responsibilities. Therefore, I don't have time for clinical experience. And med schools will just have to understand. I say, sorry. That's just... Could could you get in? You could. It's possible. Not probable. The the hoops that, that you think you have to jump through, the check boxes that you think you have to mark off are mostly for you. And when you start to think about it in that light, when you start to think about this process to, to solidify in your mind, to confirm in your mind that this is what you want and you're not just doing it because it's the next challenge out there and someone told you 20 years ago that, oh, you should be a doctor and you're like, oh yeah, I guess I can go be a doctor now. I'm ready for that in my career. You have to prove to yourself that this is what you want. Does that mean taking time off of work? Maybe. Does that mean spending or sacrificing more time outside of the house so you can do some hospice volunteering or some some emergency room volunteering or, or something else that gives you a little bit more flexibility? Does that, does that mean you take one day off of, of work every couple weeks and, and you, you find a job that's okay with that? Yes, it, it, it means there needs to be some flexibility in your life. If you are making this decision to change careers, to go to medical school, then you have to sacrifice. And that doesn't mean you have to quit your job. That doesn't mean you have to move out and, and, and go sleep on your parents' couch or something. I'm not saying that your whole life has to be upended. I'm saying you have to be sure that this is what you want above and beyond some abstract idea that you've always wanted to be a physician and now is the time. Because medical schools, I have seen time and time again and had many conversations with deans and directors of admissions, applying to medical school is much more than I have good grades, I'm a hard worker, I'm dedicated, and I know I want to be a doctor. You have to show it. You have to show you want to be a doctor. You have to prove to yourself that you want to be a doctor. You have to show that you enjoy being around patients as much as anyone can enjoy being around patients, that they they light up your life, that they give you uh, encouragement and motivation to continue down this path. I just finished a, an e-shadowing episode with Dr. Shika Jane, who's a, a hematologist, uh, oncologist, and she just... The, her conversation about being there for patients and what that means to her is the exact reason why you have to go out and put yourself around patients. You have to shadow, put yourself around doctors. You have to understand what you're getting yourself into, not just from a philosophical, high-level thinking idea, a Googling idea, but you actually have to go put boots on the ground, and and as cliche as that is, and, and go see for yourself. So you don't end up like uh, this biology professor that I talked to. She loves her career now, but it delayed her for a little bit to get into that career. And it cost her a year's worth of tuition to go to medical school for a year to ultimately realize that she didn't want to do that. So that's why I said, <laughs> a lot of people don't like this answer. But ultimately, it's the best thing for you to go out there and get some consistent clinical experience, not just check off a box for the medical schools, but to get experience to prove to yourself that this is what you want. With that, I hope you have a great week. Don't forget to check out blueprintmcat.com for their free amazing study planner tool. Hope you have a great week. We'll see you next time here on the old pre-meds podcast.